Hello beautiful people, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Fortunes. I am a marketing and communications professional and on my channel I talk about lifestyle and also career. In today's video, I'm going to be answering some frequently asked questions about my career from salary negotiation to why I left my former job to how I decide on where to move to to how I'm able to combine my passion and career like I basically just compiled all the questions I have been asked recently about my career and I'm going to be answering them in today's video. So if that's something you're interested in, you're definitely in the right place and I hope that you subscribe and watch this video to the very end. Okay? All right. So without any more yapping, <laughs> let's go straight into the meat of today's video. My answer to that is why does anyone leave? <laughs> I think about it. Why does anyone really need their former role for a new place? Um, okay, on a more serious note, in my experience, there are usually two reasons. And the first one is probably growth. And growth here could be financially. It could be in terms of job responsibilities. It could be in terms of job title. It could be in terms of even jack buying, you know, just basically going from one level to the next level that's majorly why people move and another reason could be culture or when you talk about oh my boss doesn't like me all the place is toxic all the pressure is too much and i couldn't handle it all of this so these are like in my experience the two major reasons and now when you bring it down to me why did i leave for me it was majorly growth right growth in terms of the responsibilities that i had so in my former role, I was working as an associate. And so that meant that everything that I was doing was a little bit lower, right? I had gone to school and then started as an intern and then moved on to an, um, an associate, which is good. It was good growth. But I knew that I could do more than what I was handling and I was ready for more. So I moved to a new place that allowed me more responsibilities. Now in my new place, I'm like in a senior role. And so that means that I have more control, I have more responsibility, I have more challenge, I have more things that allow me to flex my skills. And so that gives me joy. It's challenging, but also very exciting. And it feels like growth. Growth has a way of just making you feel good. So that for me was majorly why I left. Even also in terms of the industry, right? I was moving from the fintech side of things to real estate, construction, prop tech. And of course, it's a new place, a new terrain for me. But like I said before, it was challenging or it felt challenging, but also exciting because I knew that if I do this, I will grow. And I will grow in terms of my, my skills. And it's only been about two months already I know that I have grown. I have grown in terms of the fact that before in FinTech, I was trying to convince customers to buy the charge card to buy data, to buy um, these things that probably they use every day and also these things that cost maybe about 5,000, 1,000, 50,000, right? To so going into an industry where I'm trying to convince people to spend millions. So of course the marketing strategies are a bit different. And so it's like quotes in terms of like, okay, I've done this, now I'm doing something new. So it's like expanding my wealth of knowledge and that for me was why I decided, you know what, I'm going to do this. I want to do this and I want to move. And after a while, you're an associate for a while, you want to move on to the next big thing. So for me, this was an opportunity. And so it was majorly why I moved. That was why I left my new, my former role to my new role. So yeah, that's it. So since I announced moving my jobs or changing jobs or quitting my former job, I've had people ask me this question regarding quitting or say things like, Jessica, I want to quit. Is it the right time to quit? Should I quit? Um, what do I do after? Do I take a break? Or even somebody said to me, Jessica, I want to take a break from work. And in my head, I'm like, yes, that's good. That's great. I'm an advocate for it because I feel like there's more to life than just your job. Don't get me wrong. I really like my job. I like what I do. I like working. I like the structure that comes with being part of an organization and all of that. I like the teamwork, all of that. I love it. But also, I know that there's more to life than just working and so i try to create a balance and i think that taking a break every now and then is a good balance and this break could be in terms of taking a leave one week one month your 21 days or it could be just taking a gap year or you know just 
a break. I'm an advocate for it. And personally, I have done it a number of times myself. I took a break last year or last two years to go back to school. And now I'm back working. I've taken a break before, you know, just to, to sort of like clear my head and decide what I wanted to do and all of that. So I'm definitely an advocate for it. But then how do you decide that it's time for you to quit and take a break, right? First thing is, can you afford it? I'll be honest with you. It's expensive, right? It's expensive, especially in the current economic climate. It's even more harder, right? So you need to really think deep. Can I afford it? I remember that somebody asked me this question and I was really all for, oh, yes, do it ASAP. Why not? Because I was excited. But then she mentioned she had responsibilities and immediately I backtracked. I went back like, okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. I'll be honest with you, right? When I decided that I was going to take a break to go back to school, I was able to do that because one, I didn't have any responsibilities. So I don't have a sibling that I'm taking care of or financing. I was living with my parents. My parents were supporting me with school. So I did not have any massive responsibilities. And I had worked for like two, three years before going back to school. So I had saved some money that could take care of me for a while, for like a year. So you need to make sure that you can afford it. You need to make sure that you don't have responsibilities that will weigh you down. And if you do have responsibilities, try to shed them off if you can. If you cannot plan for it, maybe have like an emergency fund. I know that finance people will tell you to have like about six months or more. So I would say that you should definitely plan for it. And then that's if you want to take like a long break. But if the break you're taking is just a one month break, then I would say use your leave. If you've worked from if you've worked somewhere for one month, sorry, a year, two years, then take your leave. Take advantage of your leave. Don't wait until when you're burnt out to take your leave. Use your leave and go off. That's why it's a leave and it's even paid. So take advantage of it. Before you leave an organization, take your breaks, take your two weeks break, let them pay you, right? So make sure you use your breaks, right? And then if you're talking about leaving for another job, when do you know is the right time for you to leave? There are three things for me. The first one is in terms of personal goals that I have set for myself. What's your goal? And how is the company you're currently working in or at? How is it helping you to achieve that goal? I want to be a CMO in future. If I'm working at a place that doesn't allow me to become that in terms of the responsibilities that I'm getting, in terms of like, I can see that I'm not going to grow in this organization or I have reached my peak in this organization, then I know that it's time for me to leave. If I see that the tax that I'm working on is no longer challenging for me, it's no longer exciting for me. If I see that, you know, my wings, I want to fly and I can't fly, then I know that it's time for me to leave. Again, when I talked about toxic if it's a toxic place if the culture and my there's something called cultural fit so if myself my personality and the culture of the organization is not aligned it means it's not going to work out it means it's not going to be a great relationship so it means it's time for me to leave and so these are the things that i think about before i leave and then also it's a two thing i like to like maybe stay in the organization until i find a better place right or if it's so terrible and I can't, then I just save up money for like a month or two and then move and then take my time, two months or three months to search for a new job. So this is how I think about it when it comes to quitting or deciding that it's time for me to leave. These are the different, I know that I've spoken about different things, but I hope that if you match it together, depending on the situation that you're in and you think about it, I hope that this helps you to decide on whether you want to leave and what to do before you leave because I think the, the overarching point here is you need to prepare for it you need to prepare for it so if you're taking a long break prepare in advance do you have the are you able to afford it what are your responsibilities like just don't you know, like plan for it if you're taking a short break then also plan for it maybe have like a three-month salary or start looking for a job while you're currently in that job so that you don't even have any break in between and you just quit this one and move to the next one so these are the ways that i think about it salary negotiation I think I will start first with something I said before, which is when you're currently at one job, start applying for another job if you know that you want to leave. What that does is you have some sort of like a fallback plan and you're able to negotiate better. I realized that when I have a job and I'm talking to another job, if they give me an amount that I don't like, 
I easily just tell you, I currently earn this amount at this place, and this is what I will not go below, or this is why it will be the only, unless I have up to this before it would be a great move for me to make. You get my point. So this is like that's like a very good way to start when you're looking to negotiate. If you have an offer already, or if you have like a job already, use that as a bargaining chip. And if they want you well enough, they would come back with something better. But aside that, another thing that I've learned, and I have a video about salary negotiation, I'm going to link it in this video. It's a lesson that I learned from Bozoma. And what she said is, you know, give a figure first. So when they ask you, what is your salary expectation? Don't say, oh, tell me. You tell them and make sure it is high. Like, you know, you know that you want to get maybe 250. But go ahead and tell them 600. Go ahead and tell them 800. So that by the time they cut it, cut it and get back to you, right? It will still be better than what you had in mind. And what this will mean that it means that you have to do your own research. You need to know what the market is saying. You need to know, you know, what are people on my level? What are they getting? I know that a lot of people on social media now talk about their salaries. So yes, listen to those conversations. Ask questions, to people who you're close to. Talk to your friends. How much are you earning? I remember that when I was after my internship and my NYS, sorry, my master's program, I had a friend, or I have a couple of friends who were working. And so I went back to them and asked them, how much are you currently earning, right? Because I've been out of the market for a while and I needed to know how much they were earning. So that allowed me to, allowed me to gauge how much my risk was, how much I was not going to go below or how much I needed to get higher than what I was earning before. So that's something you need to do. Ask questions, speak to people, and then give a figure first. Because when you give a figure first, it helps to condition the mind of the person who's interviewing you in terms that they know that, okay, this is where we might eventually meet. Or in terms of, okay, should we continue this conversation? Because I remember, right, I actually, while I was job searching, I had somebody reach out to me and say, okay, so I had applied for this job. And then the HR called me. I guess she had looked at my experience and something. I said, what's your salary expectation? And then I told her. And then she said, okay, because of this, we're not going to go ahead with this. Simply because this is how much we have. And I'm like, okay, I can't do that. And so we moved on from it, right? Meanwhile, if I had not said anything and given like my real price and given like a good price, I probably would have wasted my time and then figuring out later that they could not even afford to pay me what I wanted to earn. So you need to first do your research, know what you're worth, know what the market is given at that point in time or is affording at that point in time and then add some tax to it like add more to it so that you then give them a figure and when they get back to you you can like you have a bargaining power because you go back go front just negotiate negotiate have conversations and say what you want and say what they want you know just negotiate and like i said i have a video where i speak more about this i'm going to link it on top of this video so you can definitely check that out and i hope that helps you Deciding on where to move to at this stage of my career is usually on three things. The first one is, is there an opportunity? Is there an opportunity for me to grow? Is there an opportunity for me to explore? Is there an opportunity for me to do something new, for me to experience something new? Is there an opportunity? Like, what are the opportunities like in this new organization, in this new space, in this new industry, right? If the answer to that is yes, I feel like there's an opportunity for growth, there's work to be done, it's exciting for me, even challenging as well. Then I'll say yes to it first. Second thing is the culture. What's the culture like? Is it a place where I will feel great working at? Is it a place where it aligns with my values? Is it a place where I like the people who are working there already? Like I usually will go on LinkedIn and check out the people who currently work at a place. And if I see people that, oh, I like this person, I think I would like to work with them. And I'd say yes. I also do a thing where I ask people who currently work there, like, okay, what's it like working here? Do you enjoy working there? Is it fun for you? What's the vibe like? Like, give me the thesis. <laughs> so yeah, I try to do that as well. So if the answer to that is from the conversation that I have with them is okay, yes, the culture is good, blah blah blah, and all of that, then yes, I would also say yes to it. And the third one is I like flexibility, right? At this stage of my life and this point in my career. I don't think that I want to do a job. That means I'm going to go to the office Monday to Friday every day. Unless they're paying me like some really mad money. I'm going to say no to like to that. Because I'm like, it's 2024. 
I really don't want to be there every day, every day. I mean, it's a different thing if, oh, there's like something urgent we're doing in the company and so you need to like stretch for a bit. Yes, but not like that's the norm. If that's the norm, I'm going to run away. <laughs> I don't want to have to go to the office every day. So that's also another thing. So flexibility in terms of like remote opportunities, what are the um like the incentives for 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 employees and all of those so that those are three things that i look out for when deciding on a place to go to so if the answer to everything is yes 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 definitely a big yes i'm going to join if i have like two to one then maybe i would join if it's just one i'm like yeah no never not doing <laughs> and even i join and i realize that ah this wasn't what it meant to be I'm going to jump out very quickly again. <laughs> so, yeah, those are the three things that I look out for right now. When I first started my career, it was more of like, oh, just an opportunity to explore and try out new things because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was just trying out everything and just an opportunity to learn, 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 learn. But now it's both an opportunity to learn, but also to apply my skills to get better, to grow in terms of finance, in terms of responsibility. So all of those are things I look out for when looking to join a new organization at this stage. So transitioning to comms and marketing in 2024, I think that it's very easy. Okay, maybe not very easy, but I think that communications is one of the low entry like field that you can start with. And I do have a video where I talked about the responsibilities or my responsibilities as a comms person. So what you can do is watch that video and then personally try to do some of those responsibilities on yourself with your business or with friends, right? Friends and family. Just try to see that you can do these things because it's very easy. Why I say, okay, why I say it is very easy because for one, you can start with writing articles. Writing is a big part of communication so you can improve your skills that way. So it means that when you go for an interview and they ask you, have you written anything? You can say, okay, yes, I have a medium paper. I've written about this and this and that. So you can start that way. You can also start with, you know, research. A very big part of comms marketing is actually doing research. So you can do that as well. So basically, find out what the skills are or what the things that you need to know, which is why I say you should watch the video that I have before. And so once you find out what those things are, try to see how you can do them in your everyday life, right? In your everyday career, whatever it is that you do now, try to see if there's any way you can start doing those things underneath so that then when you start applying for internships or a job role, you can say, okay, I have done this. Because a big part of looking for a new job or transitioning is to show that you're able to do whatever it is that you want to go into. So another thing is, if you're currently at a role, see if you can, within the organization, move into communication. So that before you transition outside of the company or organization, you would have some skills to say that, okay, I've done this, where I'm coming from. And so I just need even more opportunities to show you that I can do that. So read more, watch people who are in the field and start to practice personally. And I'm sure that you'd be able to do it. I, one of the things that I hate about marketing accounts are very low entry is, but it really is low entry. So yeah, I believe that you've got this. Um, I think that startups love me, so I love them back. <laughs> you know how they say, go where you're loved. So startups love me and I love them back. <laughs> That's why I always go to startups. <laughs> okay, on a more serious note though, I do think that because I started out my career working with startups, that has just continued. But that doesn't mean that I could not or I wouldn't want to work with like a more, a bigger brand if I have like an opportunity. I would, but there are three things, like I said, that I look for, and if those things are not there, then I wouldn't go. Um, there was one other big organization I was supposed to work with, and you know, we we're having conversation, but a few things happened and it fell through, and it's going back to the three things that I mentioned that are important to me when I'm thinking about going to a new place. But that aside, also is the fact that I like the level of impact that I have working with startups. Working with startups means that if I don't do my job, it is evident that I'm not doing my job. If I don't do my job, I know, the organization knows, it is very felt. And so when I go out and I tell you that I did this, I did this from scratch, it's because I really did, you know, because I know that I did. I can't tell you how I did it. That's because I work with startups. And it also has its challenges, obviously, because today you can work with a startup, tomorrow the startup will close. But then that, for me, the way I'm able to think past that is, did I do my part? 
and when I can say that yes, I did my part, I did my best to make sure that it worked and it still did it then. It wasn't it was no fault of mine. Where I would feel bad is did I not do my part and contributed to it failing. So yeah. That's how I look at it and that's how that's why I like startups, like just the impact. And I like I like to be a boss and I'm able to be a boss <laughs> at startups. So really I like that and yeah, it's been good so far. It's been good. It's been an experience. It has helped me to build my confidence because when you're able to grow things and grow in like it starts to make you feel like it did me good. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's why I like startups. Hmm, this is an interesting question, right? And for me, I would ask you a question. Where are you in your journey? Because this reminds me of the hierarchy of needs by Maslow. Maslow, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, right? Where he talks about the fact the pyramid, the bottom part is shelter, food, water, security, like those first things. Where if you're on the bottom, that's where you start from. And that's where it means money. So it means, are you surviving or are you thriving? If you're just starting out your career or if you're starting your career and you're looking for a job and you have a lot of debt, you have a lot of responsibilities, then you're looking for money. Because only when you have money and you've been able to survive and not die, is then you're able to think about skill development or then you're able to think about a um, job title. But if you are not surviving, then all those things are secondary because those things are like psychological needs because you want to feel among, you want to feel social, you want to lack, yeah. But all of those things come secondary to the basic things. And the basic things you need at the start is food, you need water, you need security, you need shelter. And the way by which you provide that at the start is money. So depending on where you are in your journey, that's what you think about. At this stage of my career, I'm able to think about, okay, maybe job title, maybe skill development, growth in those stages. But there was a point in my life where I was thinking, oh, money, who is paying me the most? There was a point in my life where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do two jobs at the same time because I need to make money. Now I don't do that as much, right? Maybe I take a few projects here and then dump it but like, and then move on, right? But now that's because I have moved up to a certain stage. By the point in my life, I would say, give me all the jobs, I'm going to do it. Why? Because I'm trying to get money. And because at that point in my life, money was more important. But right now, at the stage um, which I am, I feel like I am optimizing for building a reputation of excellence. Where it's like, this girl comes into an organization, she makes it work. It's, her work is excellent. Her work is like great. That's what I am optimizing for right now. But before then, it was money. So I was optimizing for who's going to pay me the most money. And now go here and go here and go here. You get what I mean? So it all boils down to where are you in, your, in the hierarchy of needs, right? What's like your greatest need right now? If you need money, there's no shame in going where the money is higher, even if they call you an associate, because that's what you need. But then if after you've gotten your savings, you've, sort, you've sorted out your needs and all of that, then you can go on to your wants and say, okay, job title is important or skills important and all of that. So that's how I would look at it. Ah! I love that question. <laughs> I like the fact that enjoyment is part of it because I'm a big believer in having fun even as you build your career because I like balance. I know people say like balance is unattainable, but I still aspire for it, you know? So yeah, thank you very much for that. So answer the question about how you combine your career and passion. I think that it is a matter of finding what you are good at, what you're effortlessly, effortlessly good at, and then making a career out of it, building a career around that, right? Finding what you're really good at, something you like, something you enjoy. Of course, there's so many things that you like, but there's one that you really like, and this one you don't mind making money out of it. Like you actually enjoy doing it for other people. I enjoy building brands. I enjoy helping you to craft a story and a perception about a brand. I really enjoy it. I'm very good at strategy, coming up with ideas. And so I built a career for myself around that, which is content marketing. So like that's what I'm good at. That's what I enjoy. And I made a career out of it. There are other things that I can do. I have a very good singing voice, but I do enjoy doing it for like every other person and traveling for that. I enjoy listening to people sing. <laughs> so find out what you're good at, what you enjoy, what you enjoy doing for other people and make that your career. So I think that's how you balance it. And talking about fun in your career, right? For me, I like to plan my fun. So like in a month, I have a budget that is scheduled to go out, to have fun, to do fun things with friends. 
and also even as i go about my work i look for new ways to make my work enjoyable so like i could decide to listen to a podcast while i walk in i could buy a book to read during my you know during commuting i could decide to you know go out twice in a month you know I just kind of like budget and plan my enjoyment into what I do. So that's how I think that you can make or match everything together. <laughs> hmm, my biggest learning right now is trusting my guts and my instincts. Like I mentioned before, I have sort of, I now have a more senior role. And so because of that, I need to trust myself a lot more. I need to trust that when I say this, when I give this recommendation to management, it is what I believe to be right. And because I know that I have done my research, because I know that I have done what I'm supposed to do. And also sometimes even I can trust my gut to know that yes, this thing will work because I'm gonna put in my energy to make sure that it works, right? It's something that I am learning because now I have more responsibilities and now even more leeway in the sense that you're the one making the decision. You're the one telling us, are we going here? Are we going there? So it's like, I have to trust myself because you can't convince other people to follow you if you don't even trust what you're saying. So my biggest learning right now and the biggest thing I've learned in this phase of my career is to trust myself, to trust my God, to trust my instinct, to trust that I am skillful enough, to trust that I know what I'm saying, to trust yeah, it's like to trust myself wholly and like even when I doubt it, still trust myself because I believe in myself that I would do the work to get it done. So yeah, that's like my biggest learning right now. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> I was very passionate about that question. So yeah, thank you for asking that. That's like the biggest learning right now. Learning to trust myself. A lot of times when I want to make decisions, I like to consult a lot of people. But now it's like there's no time for that. You need to make decisions on the spot. You need to like think on your own and you need to trust that what you've thought about and come up with is the right way to go. So yeah, that's something that I am really learning. Yeah. Oh, and the second one is also learning to like it's like there there's this thing where, you know, when you report to somebody and like, yeah, I've done what you said I should do. But there's this part of you're responsible. So I'm learning to carry my responsibilities with grace. And so even when I fail, I know that, okay, yeah, I fail. How do we get better? How do we move on? Because sometimes I'm very anxious of, oh my God, this is my responsibility. I don't want it to fail. I don't want it to fail. But sometimes it happens. So you need to be able to carry your responsibility with grace, even the successes and the failures. And I think another one is to talk about what you're doing and how it is moving the company forward. That's a big one as well. So yeah. Um, thank you very much for these questions. It's been amazing having to answer these questions. I do hope that you found this to be insightful. I've enjoyed talking about my career. I do not enjoy this much. So I hope that one way or another, this helps anyone who watches it. And until next time, I'm Jessica Fortune. Bye.